Jarvis lines one down the right field line. That's a fair ball. It bounces all the way into the corner. Bryant scores. Rizzo to third on a double by Zobris. And it's a 5-3 ball game. And Contreras hits a ground ball up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. One run is in. Here comes Zobris. He ties the game. A two-run single by Wilson Contreras. The ball game is tied at five. And Baez hits a ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. Hayward around third. He will score. Cubs lead 6-5. Javier Baez with a broken bat single up the middle. And the Cubs dug out, jumping up and down in absolute delight. And the 1-2 on the way. Swing and a miss. Cubs win. The Cubs beat the Giants. Celebration time on the mound at AT&T Park. The Cubs have taken care of the San Francisco Giants in four games with a four-run rally in the ninth inning. This is Cubs Postseason Live, presented by Fields Auto Group. Electricity in the air. Cubs and Dodgers game one of the National League Championship Series here at Wrigley Field, and we'll get you set right here on Comcast Sportsnet. And good evening and welcome in to our Cubs postseason live alongside my longtime partner Todd Hollingsworth and Hall of Fame second baseman, one of the great Cubs of all time, Ryan Sandberg. I'm David Kaplan. Rhino, I'll start with you. There's a buzz in the air. It's hard to believe second straight year to the NLCS. It's something else, Cap. Uh, it's, uh, it's a long time in the making, but uh, when you see uh, the making of this ball club and you see what the, what this team did last year, and they they really grew a lot as a young team. They added some veteran players, and uh, right out of spring training, uh, a favorite in the National League. So uh, maybe it's no surprise that we're here in October. I, it's no surprise to the ball club. I know that being around them. So uh, it's, uh, it's it's a good time of the year here in Chicago on the north side. Holly, this is a matchup. The Dodgers come in 48 hours ago. And everyone thought the Nationals were going to be the representative. Now they roll in, maybe a little bit short in the pitching staff. Yeah, definitely a little short in the pitching staff. I mean, there's clearly some favorable matchups in this series for the Cubs. Bottom line is this, Cubs got to take care of business. The question that you have about the Dodgers is can they ride that momentum that they created for themselves in that dramatic game five into this series and take a series using that momentum? Because as uh, as we're going to break down for you here in the pregame show, you're going to see that this is a fairly lopsided, fairly uh, Chicago Cubs favored series. All right, it's time for you to have a chance to get interactive. We'll give you a question in a couple of minutes. Grab your mobile, your tablet, your cell, whatever you've got, we would love to have you participate. CSNChicago.com slash vote. In a few minutes, we'll have a question. The guys will weigh in, I'll weigh in, and you will be able to see the results right on your screen as you vote. Again, CSNChicago.com slash vote. All right, you both played in the NLCS. You played against the San Diego Padres in a memorable series. You won a World Series. In fact, came in here with the Marlins and beat the Cubs. What do you guys remember about the pressure, the environment? Because it's not the DS. It's the CS for a pennant. You know what? In my years, in, uh, in 84 and 89, but uh, thinking back to 1984, uh, I just remember it being a different atmosphere, uh, much more of the, of the media coverage, uh, much more hoopla before the game, and uh, the talk of, of the Cubs not being in the postseason uh, up to that point. So I remember there being pressure uh, back in my day. It, was, it felt different, uh, similar to an all-star game type of an atmosphere. Uh, players get out of the routine a little bit. What I like about this 2016 club is I think they're in a routine and they have a culture where it's about showing up, being prepared, uh, play to win that day, have fun doing it, and enjoy themselves. And I think that'll go a long way with them in the postseason. What, what do you remember about the pressure? Because you've talked about 
it's different. You it know is. it's different. Oh, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's it's other level pressure. I mean, Rhino could talk about it as well. I mean, you know, you you come into baseball, you certainly hope to have a long, lengthy career. You you hope to accomplish some things. If you're lucky enough, like this guy who had the best skills that I've ever seen in a second baseman, you turn into a Hall of Famer. But the point is, is you're looking for length. You're hoping to have a great career, and then you talk about getting to the postseason, winning some games, winning winning a ring, and and doing what the you know what the postseason's all about as a team. That's the fun part about it. You know, when you get when you get to the postseason, I always you know, kind of tricked myself into believing that you know I was on borrowed time. This was the I thought it was the greatest greatest example at the major league level of team baseball was the playoffs because everybody drops the well I'm hitting 295 or I'm leading the league in hitting or you just don't care about that stuff anymore it's the idea is you're here to do one job which is to walk out of the building today with a win do whatever you have to do that day to get that win move a guy over drop a bunt down whatever you know whatever it requires to find a way to win a baseball game and that's what this Cubs team is all about that's what I love I mean I, I feel that that uh, that you know, you don't. You just don't feel like they're they're trying to do things individually. It feels so collective right now, and and you see it on a daily basis. All right, Cubs made a roster move today. The roster from the DS almost identical, with the exception of Tommy Lastella out and left-handed reliever Rob Zestrizny is in. Rano, do we make too much of? Uh oh, lefty's up. We got to bring a lefty in, or is there really something to all that? Because the Dodgers have the numbers say, struggle with lefties. Yes, they do, and they did. They have some uh, some left-handed hitters with Seager and uh, and Peterson. One extra left-hander in the bullpen, I think, is a good thing. Uh, Justin Grimm does fine against righties and lefties. He's an exception. But to have that, that extra left-hander, um, to have that luxury of making that move uh, in the postseason is kind of interesting. How how managers and, and, and teams can do that. Right. And uh, it's all according to the opposition on, on what they would need. And so uh, the numbers show it. And uh, I mean, stat packs and uh, and a couple inches thick of, of stats and, and the reports that, that, that they get, they use that, they make a judgment. And, uh, and having an extra left-hander against the Dodgers is a good thing for the Cubs. I was listening to Alex Cora today on MLB Network, and he said, for a regular game, you go through a quick scouting report, and let's go play. He said, at this, your guys have been following them for a month, and you know to the inch where a guy doesn't like to be pitched. Do you remember that stuff from Oh, absolutely, this? right. Well, but then you got to go out there and execute. I mean, it's a two-way street in that conversation, and you're absolutely right. And I think a lot of that information factors into the beginning of a seven-game series. But as a seven-game series goes, that knowledge that the hitters are able to gain going up against the entire bullpen for, say, the Los Angeles Dodgers, Dodgers is only going to serve them. If you figure out that their key lefty can't get his slider over right now, he's in your back pocket. The entire team knows it and everybody's talking about it and you know, listen, they're putting that kind of pressure on him. So, I mean, it is a two-way street. Definitely, you set yourself up at the beginning. You put your roster together with the idea that those are the best matchups. You know, if they've got a lot of lefties, you bring in an extra lefty, but he's got to do his job. I mean, that's really what it comes Otherwise, down to. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's exactly right. All right, time for our fan poll question. Again, go to your mobile, your tablet, your laptop, and you can vote. The guys will cast their votes as well. So here is the question as we go to our fan poll. What is your biggest concern as the Cubs head into the postseason? Got a number of choices you can go to. Offensive struggles against the Giants. How about too much time off after the NLDS? Kyle Hendricks healthy, got hit in the wrist. Or Clayton Kershaw pitches for the Los Angeles Dodgers. How would you vote? You know what, I think the offense needs to pick it up a little bit, and what I, it, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, when you look at the lineup and you look at these these players and what they did during the regular season, uh, there's a balanced lineup of right-handed, left-handed hitters. There, any one of those eight players, even the pitcher in the, in the, in the ninth spot, uh, is able to swing the bat on the Cubs team. So, uh, I, but I would like to see them score more runs, take a little bit of pressure and ease off of the starting pitcher going out there. I think tonight is important uh, for John Lester to uh, to set the tone as a starting pitcher, but some early runs I think would really loosen up uh, the guys and loosen up the bats. Our last choice is Cubs history in the postseason. Does that factor into you or you don't pay attention to that? No, this team doesn't pay attention to that at all, all season long, so I don't think I'm going to be worried about uh, that because uh, these guys like to play, they have fun, they, they play the game. It. And they're talented, so I think that'll speak for themselves. How do you vote? I'm with Rhino. I wish that uh, I could give you a different answer, but uh, you know the reality is this: uh, you know you can look at all the matchups, uh, the starting pitching, the defense. Cubs win a lot of them. 
They've got to hit. If you don't hit, I think today's a classic example of what Rhino's talking about right there. John Lester should dominate the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Cubs should score some runs against Kenta Maeda. But if this is a tie ball game in the seventh or a one run ball game in the seventh, one nothing, the Los Angeles Dodgers believe they've won the first seven innings. That's exactly what they're trying to accomplish. So even if the Cubs may have that lead and it's a slight lead late, you'd think that the Cubs didn't do a good enough job offensively. So it, it's a very similar answer. I look at how talented they are and the way that this thing kind of sets up, they should be scoring some runs in this series. And if they do, this could be a really, really fun series for the Cubs. All right, yeah, I'm going to go with these guys as well. If the offense comes around, the Cubs should be in good shape because I expect a great effort out of John Lester. Now, our apt electronics, appliances, and more pitching matchup. Kenta Maeda goes for the Dodgers, and John Lester coming off eight magnificent out, uh, innings against the Giants in game one in a 1 0 win fueled by Javi Baez's home run. Now, you look at some of these numbers. Lester was really good all season long 19 and 5 Maeda a big time free agent signing who came over from Japan now the fourth member of our team is the one and only Kelly Krull and she weighs in with more Kelly with our Coors Light game report well, Cap Lester looking to set the tone tonight, much like he did in game one of the NLDS against the Giants. Eight shutout innings. This will be the lefty's 16th postseason career start. And get this, among active pitchers, he leads with 106 playoff innings. And obviously, that instills a lot of confidence in this young team that will be taking the field behind him tonight. And oftentimes, pitchers will tell you they don't put a lot of stock in the results they had during the regular season against a team. But it should be noted, Lester against the Dodgers this year, giving up just one run in 15 innings of work. And he says even with that success, there will still be a feeling out period tonight. The two games that I pitched against them, the one they were they came out swinging and then the one they tried to they tried to get their pitch early and then they worked the counts. I remember out there, there's a lot of deep counts, a lot of foul balls. Um, so, you know, I, I don't like I said, I think every team has its own identity and I think um, Certain teams are able to, to kind of flip it a little bit on you as far as their approach and that sort of thing. So we'll kind of see where they're at. On the other end of that experienced spectrum will be the 28 year old rookie, Kenta Maeda, who makes just his second postseason start for LA tonight. And the righty didn't fare so well in game three of the NLDS against the Nationals, giving up four runs in three innings. This, however, will be the first time the Cubs have seen him, and Skip says that can present some challenges. For us, it would just be about uh, being prepared. And when it, whenever you're facing good pitchers, it's about hitting their mistakes. I mean, if the guy's on, he's on. If he's, if he's making pitches, regardless if we've seen him five times or zero times, he's going to be difficult. Um, so I, it's, you would think, like I've always said, you think the pitcher having never seen us should have it somewhat of an advantage. We'll focus on what we do well, but, but definitely, uh, you know, you have to make the adjustment based on who you're playing. And so we'll, uh, you know, we'll look at what, what strengths we have versus their weaknesses and try to exploit those. Maeda said yesterday in his press conference that one of his main objectives tonight, just trying to give the bullpen some rest. They were 22 and a third innings in the NLDS. So obviously equally important for the Cubs will be trying to drive up his pitch count early like any other pitcher and gain an early advantage here in front of this home crowd cap. All right, thank you very much, Kelly. Now let's look at our two pitchers a little closer. John Lester. This guy's been magnificent. He was signed for moments like this. There's no doubt about it. This is a big game. I mean, he set the tone. I, I think Rhino said it right. Uh, that's exactly what you're expecting. You know, you look at the matchup tonight against the Los Angeles Dodgers collectively. Listen to this, people. All right, 138, 185, 179. That is the entire Dodgers history against John Lester. That is a 363. Cappy, repeat after me. 363. That's their OPS. It's not their on-base percentage or slugging percentage. That's called ownership. John Lester has owned the Los Angeles Dodgers. Again, bringing us back to the point, score a few runs for the man early. This should be John Lester's night. Your thoughts on Lester as he takes the ball because he got a big contract, not for the regular season. It was that guy can lead us in the postseason. He's the right guy for tonight. Uh, he's he's been the guy all year. Uh, he's a Cy Young candidate, and uh, the team played for home field advantage for a reason. So I think game one is very important. He's tonight's starter, so he can set the tone not only for this game for the series. Uh, he, uh, he 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 throws strikes. Um, 
He's tough on right-handed hitters, left-handed hitters. He's an exception uh, as far as a left-handed pitcher, and uh, he's on a roll. Once again, some early runs. I think it would relax. Come in handy for him, make him relax. Right. Your thoughts on Kenta Maeda? He was a big dollar signee, and a lot of teams wanted him. Uh, Kenta Maeda's had a fantastic season for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He, that's not lost in this conversation. In fact, he's been the most reliable starter that they've had all season long. Made all 32 starts, 175 innings, 3-6 ERA, piled up 16 wins. The problem that you have, and again, here we go again. His last two starts have not gone well. In fact, the last two starts, the two shortest starts of his season. He did not pitch well against the Nats. Nats were all over him. He, Giants wore him out last game of the season. So he's not coming in here high on, on momentum. He's throwing the ball particularly well. He was up in the zone. They made him pay. I think there's a real advantage. Now, Ken Maeda, the one thing working for him is that he's kind of that guy that the Cubs have struggled with a little bit. The guy who can mix it up, the guy that can pitch backwards, the guy that can throw a first pitch curveball or slider, maybe chase, chase you with a fastball late. He can do that, but he's been struggling. So it's going to be interesting to see early on what he brings to the table. Let me factor in this. There is no history between Kenta Maeda and the Cub hitters. Literally, nobody has in a bat against him. And he may be getting a little tired. This is his first exposure to big league baseball at this level, and now he's stuck right here. This is pressure. It is, Cap, but you never know how a, how a, a player handles that. Uh, sometimes, a goal, sometimes a guy will go to a, a different level. But uh, uh, we'll see. I think... Uh, I think Dexter Fowler at the top of the order is a guy that can get on base, create some, uh, get him thinking about the base runners a little, little bit, set that tone yeah. with some base runners, get him in the stretch. Let's see if he can pitch in the stretch and how well he can do that early yes, on. Hopefully that's in the first inning. All right, we come back. We're going to ask a guy who won nine gold gloves, is one of the greatest second basemen in baseball history, his opinion of what Javi Baez is doing over at second base. We'll get you the lineups and a whole lot more. It's our Cubs postseason live. We'll continue on CSN. Cubs pregame live is presented by Fields Auto Group. Fields matters because you matter. See Fields first. FieldsAuto.com. Is there such thing as a free lunch? Yes, as well as breakfast for our Fields customers at any of our locations with a cafe. Hello, I'm Dan Fields. There's also free loaners and free car washes. You see, a Fields customer not only gets our lowest price, they also get all of our amenities at no additional cost. There is one thing you don't receive, pressure. We simply treat people the way we want to be treated. It's a commitment to our customers we made long ago. Fields matters because you matter. You know the feeling. rush of every roll, every flip, sip, bite, note, and night. You know the feeling. Get it at Ameristar. In Chicago, some things just go together, like front porches and blue W's, bricks and ivy, Waveland Avenue, and souvenirs. Jake and State Farm. Like home and auto insurance with State Farm, they just go together. And they save you time and money. Just another way we're here to help life go right. Talk to a State Farm agent today. Did you just see that? That was awesome. We have to try it. Okay. Okay, mine's not working. Maybe you have to bump it. Oh yeah, do the bump it thing. Right. Okay. You can take money out using the BMO Harris app. You want to buy a hairless cat? There's a pet store down the street. Cool. I think she said BMO Harris app. Yeah, that makes more sense. When your phone is your debit card, that's the BMO effect. BMO Harris Bank, we're here to help. All right, time for our ATI physical therapy injury report. Good news is everyone healthy. The only scare the Cubs got a week ago tonight, Kyle Hendricks took a line drive off the bat of the Giants' Angel Pagan, had to leave the ball game when it hit him in the forearm. The liner did no lasting damage. Hendricks cleared and will start tomorrow night's game two right here against the Dodgers at Wrigley Field. Pagan got down the line. 
All right, welcome back here to our Cubs postseason live with Hall of Famer Ryan Sandberg and Todd Hollinsworth, the 96th National League Rookie of the Year. I'm David Kaplan. Let's look at the lineup that Joe Madden will bring out to home plate tonight. Here is his lineup card brought to you by Ameristar Casino Hotel. Fowler in center, Brian at third, Rizzo at first, Zobrist in left, Russell's at short, Hayward in right, Baez at second, Ross catches, and John Lester gets the ball pitching. Let's talk about Chris Bryant. Six out of 16 in the DS, well over 300, and he can break the game open. It's good to see him swinging the bat like that in postseason, uh, being a young player. But he's a he's a big bat right there from the right side, middle of the lineup. Uh, uh, great to see him swing the bat, but he he's a threat every time he goes up there. I mean, uh, whether it's a pitcher's mistake, whether it's just strikes, uh, any pitch in the strike zone, he gets a he good can hit out. at it, and he's a he's a big threat. So it's uh, good to see that early in this postseason. Season. Your thoughts on Chris? I mean, this guy's moved all over the diamond all year long, and then he settled in the two hole, and they've got him back at third. I think of Chris, and I think of the progression that we've watched all the way back to the beginning of last year and to where he is today and what the expectations are for this young man. You know, I throw that out there like, you know, <laughs> you remember he's he's a baby at this game, and we look at him like he's been in the game for six years, seven years, and doing it day in and day out, and even the pressure that he's taking on right now. Most people I see projecting, the, you know, the Cubs team playing very well in this series, but oh, you know, Brizzo has to be better, and that's really what it comes down to. Chris has been on his game, he looks comfortable, he looks relaxed, and that's always key to his game. I think back to that little cement mixer he hit in San Francisco for the home run off the top of the car. That was a huge home run. Uh, he's coming up with big moments, and that's what special players do. You lean on those guys to come up for those special moments, and he's getting it done. How about a guy like Ben Zobrist? Here's a switch hitter. He only hit 188 in the DS, but yet when he came up in the ninth inning, he delivered. He's a veteran guy. Uh, he's, he's good from both sides of the plate. He's going to battle the at-bats. He's going to make the pitcher throw strikes. He's, he has quality at-bats uh, nearly every time he goes up there, and he makes the pitcher work. Uh, but uh, as far as clutch, situation, whatever the situation calls for in the game for the team, uh, ben is that guy and, and, and does a good job in that situation. Being that he was in a World Series a year ago and won it, how much does that experience help to relax you when you get back to this situation? That's huge, and uh, I think it rubs off on the other players around him. Uh, and I think what he is, I think he's just, he's the same way all the time, and he is relaxed. And he's a gamer on top of it, so he's kind of a good mixture of all the qualities you want in a player. And him being around the young players uh, in the infield and in the outfield. Rubs off. Outstanding. How about your yeah. thoughts on the offense of Javi Baez? Before oh. we get to his defense, <laughs> Javi was magnificent. I Listen, I have love, loved this kid for years. I mean, we talk about how athletic he is, how much passion he plays this game with. You know, there were a few loose ends that needed to be tightened up early on in his career. The thing that has impressed me is, 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 is a young player is as talented as himself, could have taken all the advice from his coaches, from his manager, and said, eh, whatever, I can play this game, and probably survived at the big league level for 10, 15 years, and we would have raved about him at some certain points, but I don't know if he would have taken it to the next level. I think the fact that he is this type of player and willing to take it to the next level, toning his swing down in key moments, understanding what going the other way means, understanding what not striking out means, and playing you know at that high level, playing the game respectfully and passionately, and with a little bit of flavor to go along with it is only enabled him to become the star player that he is today. If he wouldn't have embraced those challenges that were thrown his way by Joe Madden and other coaches early in his career, he could have said, eh, I think he would be a different player today. Matter of fact, he may not even be in the lineup tonight. He, I, I don't think the Cubs win without him in the lineup. How about your thoughts on him defensively? Because I think the rest of the country is opening eyes going, whoa, that guy can flat out play. He's unbelievable, and uh, I've been, really been uh, amazed at the way that Joe has, has used him as a, a, su a super utility right. fielder, and it doesn't even have to be in the infield. Uh, and, and it seems like Joe has looked at the pitcher, looked at the looked at the, their starting pitcher, looked at the uh, opposing offense, anticipated where balls would be hit, and then put the hobby there to play defense right. in unbelievable. that position. But I know how hard it is to uh, take a pregame, concentrate on one position defensively, the angles, uh, how the ball bounces. And, but to see him hop around the whole infield and spend some time in the outfield and adjust, 
and be a gold glover type of a player at each position. That's very impressive. Um, I think the other thing with, uh, with, with, with the Chris Bryant and the Javi, I think they're at the right place at the right time being on this club with Joel Madden as a manager. I think he's very patient. I think he uh, has puts trust in his players and having the veteran players around a guy like Javi. Sometimes it doesn't have to be Joel Madden that gets a message across uh, whether if there's something to be said, there's enough veteran guys in there. David Ross, number one, right. that'll, that'll uh, get a pl young yeah, you, player. You knew you showed play. up every day and you were going to play right out there at second. You pretty much knew, at least at the start, where you were going to be. Right. These guys show up and go, oh, I'm in the outfield today. They Unbelievable. No it's very impressive. It's not that easy. It, I know it's not they that easy. They make it look and, easy. And they may look, well, they're very athletic and uh, they have all the tools. All right, now time for Dave Roberts' lineup guard that he'll bring out to home plate tonight. Let's take a look at what the Dodgers have. They'll go with Kendrick in left, Turner at third, Seegers at short, Puig is in right field. Adrian Gonzalez at first. Carlos Ruiz came over from the Phillies late in the season. He will catch. Kiki Hernandez is at second. Jock Peterson is in center. And Kenta Maeda. Let's talk about Justin Turner. Hit 400. 400. And he hit a big home run the other night. This guy can flat out play. Yeah, he can. He's an interesting uh, interesting player. I mean, he's a utility guy. Uh, you know, I think Jose Batista over the Toronto Blue Jays, you know, a player who kind of got labeled as a utility guy, uh, you know, back with the Mets and has turned into a mainstay at third base, almost a, <laughs> I don't know where we would be without him type of player. And when you look at his numbers in the season that he's had, he's driven in 90 runs, he's hit for power, just a fantastic season. Uh, they got him in the two hole tonight. They're, you know, he's big. I mean, this team has struggled against lefties and he's actually a reverse split guy, meaning he likes the righties better than the lefties, but it's a very interesting lineup. Turner's been huge for him. He's riding some momentum that he created in that DS. He was one of their hotter hitters. So certainly take note of where you're at. He's sitting in the two hole tonight. And, uh, you know, the righties against John Lester are going to be what, you know, manager Dave Roberts is hoping they can get some things done against. He's an igniter for them. He is uh, from the right side. Uh, they're a little bit strong with the left handed hitters that they have. Uh, he's the one right-handed hitter. He has pop. Uh, you have to make good quality pitches against him. You cannot make a mistake. He, he, he could be a mistake type of a hitter, a bad ball hitter, but he's up there to swing it to do damage, and he's from the right side. So he's one uh, that they'll have to keep, uh, Joe will have to keep an eye on him, and the, and the starting pitchers and the pitching staff will have to pay attention to him. Jock Peterson is another guy who gives them thump. Left-hand hitter hit a big home run the other night. It was like June of last year. He and Chris Bryant were battling for Rookie of the Year, and then Chris went in overdrive and blew him field away. Right. Well, they gave Chris Bryant more responsibility, and they gave Jock Peterson less. And I think it, it served him well. I don't mean that in a negative way. Uh, you know, he was going through some real trials in the you know in the second half of last year, where his game and his strikeout totals were going through the roof more comparably more like Javi Baez so they moved him down to the lineup took took less responsibility off of going into this year and he's produced that's really what the you know the, the blessing in disguise has been for the Los Angeles Dodgers is that he's become that player kind of doing it backwards they gave him less and he's kind of starting to blossom once again but doing it from the bottom of the lineup he has got pop and power to all fields so be careful with him pitches out over the plate he'll jump shift to left left center field as well as anybody yeah, in, this, in, in this ballpark you got to keep him from going out of the ballpark you do. You have to. You have to pitch him down in the zone. You have to mix up your pitches. But, uh, but just another guy to, to pay attention to and, and and make quality pitches on him. Have him hit your pitch. Keep it in the infield. We got got one of the best uh, defensive uh, infielders right. in you baseball. Got guys, let him field it. Make him hit some ground balls. No question. All right, we got to take another time out here. Still a lot more to do on our Cubs postseason live pregame show. We will have another chance for you to get interactive with us as well. We'll be right back here on CSN. Hello? This is she. Is that the doctor? Okay, wow, really? It's two? It's two. That's great news, thank you. It's two? Yes, it's two. It's two for one windows at Feldco. Feldco is offering two windows for the price of one with no money down and no interest until 2018. Two windows for the price of one and soon. Hurry. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feltco. Your mommy knows where to find great Nissan savings. At Arlington Nissan, get great customer service, selection, and savings. 
during our Savings Spooktacular. Lease a 2016 Rogue S for just $149 a month with $29.95 due at signing. Bob Roarman. Bob Roarman's Arlington Nissan, just east of Route 53 on Dundee Road. On average, an American household with at least one credit card struggles with over $15,000 in credit card debt. But right now, if you qualify for National Debt Relief's Debt Reset Program, your debt balances and monthly payments will be reduced while you become debt-free in 24 to 48 months. Enroll now and there won't be any upfront costs or out-of-pocket expenses. To qualify for the Debt Reset Program, you must have at least 10... Talk Live, presented by Chevy Silverado, weeknights at 6 on CSN. Warm up for every Bears game one hour before kickoff with Bears pregame live. Briggs, Brown, Miller, and Bowden get you ready for kickoff and have instant reaction on Bears postgame live immediately following the game. The best Bears coverage in the city is on CSN Chicago. I felt like more alive that day than I ever, ever have in my life. You know, just all my senses were awake and ready to go and intense. Inside Look, Rex Grossman, presented by Cadillac, premieres tonight after Cubs postseason live on CSN. It's 31 minutes until the start of the game. There's still time to give Feltco a call. Call 866-4-F-E-L-D-C-O. And another opportunity for you to get interactive with our show. Again, mobile, laptop, Grab your tablet, whatever you've got. Go to csnchicago.com slash vote. The question is, who most has to step up for the Cubs offensively here in the NLCS? Number of choices. You can go with Dexter Fowler, Anthony Rizzo, Addison Russell, or Ben Zobrist. How would you vote? Uh, I'd have to go with Anthony Rizzo. Uh, he's the guy right there in the middle. He's, he's the team captain on the, on the field in the clubhouse and uh, and he was a little bit off he was a little bit off his game uh, there uh, against the Giants but, no question uh, he's also a guy that the other team's gonna look out and say don't let this guy beat you so he's up against that uh, the recipe for him maybe have some base runners uh, uh, on base ahead of him some good hitting situations some men on third less than two outs some second and third uh, get the pitcher in the stretch but uh, there's no reason why I don't see him taking off and having a big series he's He's, he's right on top of the plate. He battles the pitcher. He gives you quality at bats all year long. So I see him stepping up, having a good series. How about you? I need to be saying Dexter Fowler's name a little bit more when, in the post game. It, it's just really what it comes down to for me. We've talked you about go, it. You go, we go, as hey, Joe man, We've talked about him. it all season long. I gave him the first half MVP award. He's had a fantastic season. And the reason he's had a fantastic season for me is because he's getting on base. When Dexter's on base, he seems to be stirring it up. He gets Anthony Rizzo to play better. I, I guess that's kind of what I feel. I look at Bryant. Yeah, we may have those isolated moments where they take over a game, and they can do that probably a little bit better than Dexter. But when he's on twice a game, there's just a different response to the rest of the lineup. So, me, it's, it's plain and simple. Dexter gets on, this lineup will wake up and start to roll. All right, now, Rhino managed the Philadelphia Phillies. One of his players was catcher Carlos Ruiz, who was traded to the Dodgers late in this season, and he will be in the lineup tonight catching Kenta Maeda. What is he like as a baseball player? Because I always respected him from across the field. Carlos is a quality guy. He's a veteran guy, but he he uh, he loves to play the game. Um, he had a luxury there in, in Philadelphia with, with Halliday and, and, and Hamels and Lee and uh, some tremendous pitchers uh, over there when they won the World Series in 2008, but uh, he's been there. I mean, he's, he's been on a World Series team. He's been an all-star. Uh, he, he swings the bat from the right side. He's a smart hitter. Uh, so he's just a guy kind of laying in the weeds there in the lineup. Uh, uh, he can be clutch with some men on base. He, he likes to use right center field in those situations, using the whole field. So uh, so to mix up the pitches and, and once again, a guy to pay attention with men on base especially. What's your thoughts on him? Well, he's a heck of a ball player. I was actually going to ask Rhino, what do you think his, you know, how do you think he's going to, how is he going to get Maeda to go tonight? Like, what is he going to look to do? This is a guy who's struggled his last two times out. Now, Chuch is back there for a reason. He's the veteran presence. What does he do to get Maeda right tonight? What do you? What do we need to look for? Yeah, Holly, I think I think first of all, uh, Chuch is going to get him to uh, establish strikes early on. Pitch ahead in the count is very important against an offensive team like the Cubs. Mm -hmm. uh, keep men on base, but uh, but set a tone. Set a tone of 
always for me, the, the faster that a, a pitcher works, uh, everybody on the defense stays on their toes, right. throwing strikes, so establishing the strike zone, preferably down at the knees. We've got the wind blowing out tonight. Right. So uh, both both pitchers, I think, will think a little bit more down early on in the count. If they need to expand up, that'll be a purpose pitch later on. But uh, Chooch will get them to try and throw strikes. So with that being said, uh, having the Cubs hitters going up there and being ready to go, and, uh, and hit strikes. Uh, you get so, something so in your zone, base. be oh. ready to go. Yep. All right, we'll take another timeout. We come back, we'll ask both guys, what kind of an effect can a manager have on a baseball team? Some observers say not a lot, others say tremendous. We'll get their thoughts next on CSN. This Cubs injury report is brought to you by ATI Physical Therapy. Taking physical therapy to a higher level. Ask your doctor about ATI Physical Therapy. Get there. When you're on hold, your business is on hold. That's why Comcast Business doesn't leave you there. When you call, a small business expert will answer you in about 30 seconds. No annoying hold music. Just a real person, real fast, whenever you need them. So your business can get back to business. Sounds like my ride's ready. Don't get stuck on hold. Reach an expert fast. Comcast Business, built for business. So you're fine with getting rid of the trophy case? Yep. And the carpet? Mm-hmm. And that? Yes. Cover it up quickly with Dutch Boy Platinum Paint Plus Primer. With Platinum's no prep, no prime formula with advanced extreme high technology, Menards and Dutch Boy make transforming your world easy. Good color, honey. Go Dutch. When you visit Canal's BMW, your toughest decision is which BMW will you drive home? A sporty BMW convertible? BMW sedan? BMW coupe? Or one of these BMW high-performance luxury models? And of course, everybody can get into one of these beauties. Canal's BMW. Outstanding selection. Competitive pricing. Always a great decision. You feel like singing a song And you want other people to sing along And just sing what you feel Don't let anyone say it's wrong When there's a light, what light? When there's a light, what light? When there's a light, why light? It's time for Built for Business, presented by Comcast Business, and today we're looking at the career resume of Dodgers manager Dave Roberts, who broke into the big leagues as a player in 1999 with the Indians. They're playing for the Dodgers. He was part of the 04 Red Sox team that won the World Series. He would go on to play for the Padres and Giants as well. In 2011, he became the bench coach of the Padres and managed them for one game after Bud Black was fired. He was named the Dodgers skipper this past November. Comcast Business built for business. For more on Dave Roberts, let's go back to Kelly Crawl. Yeah, Cap, a lot of fun sidebar stories when you think about it during this series with the Dodgers. You've got the relationship between Joe Madden and Andrew Friedman, who's now the general manager of L.A., but at the time hired Madden in Tampa Bay. You've got Dave Roberts and his connection with Boston that you mentioned, and he was also the manager of the Dodgers, very influential in David Ross's early career out in Los Angeles. It's a great example of the full circle when you think about how influential Ross has been with the young players here, whether it's Wilson Contreras, Chris Bryant or Anthony Rizzo and he said he learned a lot about how to approach this game the right way from Dave Roberts. He was a mentor for me uh, when I was coming up. I mean he's uh, one of those guys that would say hey let's go to breakfast the next morning you know like let's let's hang out let's um, you know what are you doing on this off day I know you don't have family here uh, you know come up to the house and let's do dinner just is a guy that that choked, took me under his wing and, and there's a lot of downtime as a rookie and so uh, when you have a veteran player that that um, was kind of a role player to himself coming up for a little while until he found his niche it just was nice to, to hear his side of things when you talk baseball and, and um, a guy that uh, is is uh, a big faith guy a, a quality human being as well as a, a phenomenal player so you you understood 
that you could be you could you could be a well-rounded person and be a good player. You, you know, there's there's there was a lot of stereotypes when I was coming into the game, and um, you know, steroids were an issue. There was a lot of a lot of things going on, and this guy was a quality human being doing things right. And um, I really believe good things happen to good people, and you're seeing that. The respect and admiration really goes both ways. I spoke to Doc before the game, and he said Rossi was one of his all-time favorite teammates, and he's so glad to see the respect he's getting from this Cubs team and the community here in Chicago. So well-deserved, and Cap, you'll appreciate this. He said he really hopes the cameras aren't on him tonight when Ross's Forever Young walk-up song comes on because he says he'll probably flash a huge grin just thinking about where his career started and where it's coming to a close. All right, thank you very much, Kelly. All right, Ronnie, you managed in the big leagues. You managed in the minor leagues, worked your way up. What is it like? What kind of an effect can a manager have if they don't have a roster of Rizzo, Bryant, Arietta, Lester, and on and on and on? Well, first of all, I think a manager... Has, uh, in the Cubs, as far as the Cubs go, I think Joe Madden, I, th I think he's really set the culture. Um, I think he uh, allows uh, the young players to be themselves, to play, to make mistakes, to correct those mistakes. And, and I, uh, you know, for, for him to have a hand in some of the veteran guys uh, that came over to... Uh, to be one of his, uh, kind of his right-hand guys in the locker room because he can't be in the locker room all the time. He lets them police. So I, I, he does a very good job uh, with with the guys being on the same page. You know, to have a manager uh, have guys switch positions and not play their natural position and and not have any fight on that. You know, you have to have a, a manager that uh, that uh, has good conversations with players, gets everybody on the same page. They buy, they buy in. Team concept. I think that's one of the toughest things today. Uh, is to get uh, everybody on board because you got 22 year olds you got 40 year olds on the same team and uh, and and so to get everybody on the same page a team concept of what, what we're trying to do here is win baseball games correct he's been out Joe's been outstanding as far as that goes you were on a team that won the World Series yet made a managerial change yeah, in fired. May yeah. you fired Jeff Torborg right. you brought in Jack McKeon and your team took off why well, you know, it, it, it's a tough question. Miguel you know, the, Cabrera. Well, <laughs> Miguel Cabrera is probably more of the answer than 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 breaking it down for everybody to understand. I don't. I think most of us still feel guilty about that. I mean, you know, we felt like we could have won the World Series that year with Jeff Torborg. We felt like we failed him, and that's part of what you know. Sometimes managers have to deal with in this game. They know that their their job status and really the definition or how we look at them is defined by the product that's on the field. And number one, talent wins. I mean, that's the reality. Is that if you've got a team team that can play you know you're gonna get away with a little bit more and if you don't you might not I mean that's what it comes down to for me I always believe that you know I look over at Joe I look at Dave Dave Roberts in this and you know David's Dave's a first-year manager but the one thing that this team seems to do is rally around his enthusiasm. When I see him on the top step of the DS, patting guys on the back, cheering guys on, pumping his fists in the air, that gets me excited. Those are, players want to play for guys like that. And I, I mean, that's the thing. Everybody says, you know, put in a, you know, a lineup, a pecking order of the things that are most important, uh, you know, for what a manager needs to be. The first thing I need, I, I think of is the, the biggest cheerleader in the, you know, in the building. And if he is, he'll get his players to play for him. We will have more Holly's Keys, and the three of us will wrap it up, get you set for baseball. Cubs and Dodgers right around the corner. Stick around here on CSN. We are the Coors Brewing Company, and our mountain is brewing the world's most refreshing beer. A beer proud enough to wear our name in big, red, scripted letters. That's why we lager, filter, and package cold. Because we believe every climb deserves a refreshing finish. Whatever your mountain, climb on. With a curved ultra-high definition screen, Samsung's SUHD TVs give you a brighter picture and the most brilliant colors for the best viewing experience. It's Samsung's best TV, and it's here at Apt Electronics. Available in screen sizes from 48 to 88 inches. Come see it today. Guaranteed low prices, unbeatable selection, and free local delivery. Apt. Pleasing people since 1936. We started with the class-leading RX. We gave it paddle shifters to help you command the road. 
A sport mode to help you control the road. And a sport-tuned suspension to help you connect the road. The Lexus RX F-Sport. This is the RX Elevated. Lease the 2016 RX 350 for 419 a month for 36 months. See your Lexus dealer. Four seasons, how can we help you? It's the furnace! The old pile of scraps burning through my savings! Hurry! Remain calm, we're on our way. 24-hour repair and same-day installation. Four Seasons can replace your furnace for as little as $17.95. Furnace and AC combos from $36.95. And take advantage of 0% interest financing for five years. For all the right reasons, call 866-4-SEASONS. Joe Blanton to Chris Bryant as we start the eighth. And Bryant in the air. Deep center. And it will. Jed Hoyer, Cubs VP and general manager, kind enough to join us here in advance of game one of the NLCS. So you and Theo and Jason were getting a lot of airtime the other night, and you looked, I won't say panicked, you looked a little nervous. What was going on between the three of you during that ball yeah. game? Yeah, I mean, listen, obviously we always have faith in our team, but you two hits three eight innings, and you look like you're about to get on a flight to come back and, and play a game five against Cueto. Um, it wasn't our happiest moment, you know, and it was uh, it was wonderful the way our guys rallied in the in the, in the ninth. Uh, one of the best comebacks I've been a part of, and uh, let me tell you that flight was a lot better than uh, we expected, you know, two hours before. Well, and can you can you explain it from your seat, from your job description, you know, what you do behind the scenes as a front office guy? Uh, I mean, I can speak to it as a player. I mean, elements of frustration. We should be doing more. We should have jumped on this guy, and you know, you find a way to win, you know get a win. When you're feeling what you're, you know, you're watching what maybe, and you know what your team's feeling. What are you feeling? Do you feel that frustration? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, you, you get that sense. You know, I, I felt like he made some mistakes. We didn't jump on him, and then right. we let him get comfortable in the game. And once he, once he settled in, he was really good. Right. And that's always a frustration is you kind of know once a guy gets comfortable on the mound, once he starts feeling, you know, confident and good about himself, you know, good things happen for him. Right. We kind of let him get into that that mode. Mm -hmm. And um, I just love the fact that once there was blood in the water that we, that we really finished the job. You know, we didn't tie the game and then play 13 innings. Javi got the big hit. Chapman struck out the side. Um, I thought it was pretty decisive once we got the lead, and, and that was a wonderful thing. Well, tell me your thoughts now going into this series. You know, the Dodgers play a tough five-game series. That's, a lot of people didn't think they could beat Scherzer. You guys got a little bit extra rest, but they're a quality opponent. They're a really good team. You know, I think we uh, kind of always expected this would be the team that we would face if we got to the NLCS. Uh, very deep, uh, very left-handed, and obviously, you know, Kershaw, you know, probably the best pitcher in the world. You know, he's been for a long time. So, uh, like I said, this is kind of what we expected we were going to play. It's a great test for us. I think it's going to be a great series. And um, it's going to be a chess match, you know, between Dave and, and Joe. Uh, the Dodgers match up a lot. They use their entire roster. We use our entire roster. Uh, this isn't one of those series that you, know, you have 10 really talented players and, and, and 15 players on each team that aren't going to have a big role. I think all 25 guys are going to play a big role in this series. What do you think is key for this team offensively? You know, this team was put together. You know, you look at the end numbers. You say Zobers has had a great season. Bryant, Rizzo, Fowler. We, I mean, we know all that they have. But we talk about the, the Giants series. We seem to talk about that one big inning where everything started to come together. Do you believe that that's something that will springboard into the NLCS and that we should see this team and expect this team to be off and running? Or, you know, we had a few days off again and the bats might be a little cold to start. I hope so. You know, what we didn't do in the Giants series until the last inning was we didn't string hits together. Right. And we had, like, you know, kind of one rally in the second inning of game two. Otherwise, it was homers and that was it. And so, you know, for me, that's the biggest thing is have rallies, draw walks, get guys on base and start to, you know, you know, string hits together. If we can do that, we'll be in good shape. I think we'll always hit homers. We know that's part of our DNA. But you can't just always be a bloop and a blast type team. You need to be a team that gets guys on base, starts moving those guys around the diamond a little bit. And uh, we had one inning like that, or two innings like that in four games. We need more innings like that against the Dodgers. Thoughts on the roster you put together? Tommy LaSella didn't make it this time. Rob Zestrizny did. 
You know, uh, we felt a little bit short a couple of times during the, the first series. You know, we had 13 innings. We only had CJ left after Montgomery, and we probably pushed Montgomery further than we wanted to because of that. Um, these guys are really left-handed. The more lefties, the better as far as matching up. Um, that was really the biggest reason is that uh, you want to have the flexibility. If you get a Paul starter early-ish, you want to know you got enough pitching behind them. And uh, I think you know, adding Rob allows us to do that. Let me ask you, and this might be a tricky question to answer, but I think it's an obvious question to ask. A role Chapman in this series could be huge. We know that the Los Angeles Dodgers struggle with lefties. We know that going into today. The They're one of the worst teams against lefties all season long. He's a huge weapon. It's been debated going back to the Giants series and two out saves. Is there the hope that you see a little bit more of Aroldis Chapman in this series? Like, you know, I can almost make the case that, you know, no, no matter what happens this offseason, this is why he is here. It's like this series because of the matchup. There's no doubt. And I think, you know, look at the games that we're, you're going to play. We played, you know, four close games, including three one-run games mm -hmm. in the last series. They played, I think, three one-run games uh, in, in the series against the Nationals. That's playoff baseball. You don't spread games out very often. I think we won 40-something games by five or more runs during the season. We're not going to do that in the playoffs. You know, uh, managers go to their bullpen earlier. They don't let starters give up six or seven. So as a result, every game that we're fortunate enough to win is going to be a close game. There's not going to be any, any laughers. And so every game we win, Chapman is going to play a big role. And, I, and that's how I see it, is that the reason the closer and the bullpen has a more magnified uh, impact on the playoffs is that there are no such thing as games that are spread out. When you guys went into RPM steak and wine to dine John Lester, you knew he would be a solid pro in your clubhouse. You knew he'd be a solid every time he took the ball. But was it moments like tonight that most intrigued you?